Well, hello, everybody. I pulled out the Osmo Pocket 3, got my little microphone here, and uh, just threw together a Substack post that kind of walks through where my mind is at with the channel. And I was like, why don't I just fire up a video? And then I've got a video version. So if you don't want to read it, <laughs> or you just like hearing me ramble about things, then, you know, you can watch or listen. And I'm happy to have you uh, here either way. So, and I apologize, because like, you know, I woke up, it's Saturday morning. I woke up, took the dogs to the dog park, had a really busy morning uh, taking care of some family stuff and house stuff uh, around like all of my like data analysis about what's working on the YouTube channel, the Text Builder YouTube channel. Uh, so I'm a little scruffy. So I apologize about that. So what I've been thinking about is really at the end of the day, it's about focus. I've been looking at my channel and kind of seeing what I've been doing. You know, I've almost been doing this a year and I'm really proud of where it's at and what I've been able to accomplish with it. I'm closing in on 5,000 subscribers, which feels like a nice milestone. But as I've realized in the world of YouTube, it's ne like the grass is always greener, man. Anytime you have a new milestone and you're like, that's it. And then you pass it, you're like, yay. And then that like celebration lasts for like an hour or a day. And then you're like, all right, well, what's the next one? That's the next one. And, you know, it's almost like you're never truly satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> even though I'm super grateful for where I'm at. So I'm close to 5,000 and I'm really happy about that. Um, but I want to grow that, right? I want to take a look at what's really what this morning has been for me is taking a look at what is obviously working on the channel. And because I've done a lot, like when I'm looking at my, my stats right now, you know, how many, how many, uh, hopefully the audio doesn't blast me away. Hi, my name is Jason Hill. Uh, I have almost 200 videos. I'm at 197 videos. Now, granted, that's, you know, that's long form, that's podcast, that's shorts. But, you know, I've done a couple of hundred videos since I started this um, closing in, getting near a year. I think actually I probably started this channel about more like nine or ten months ago, probably ten months ago. But anyways nearish a year, uh, six months since I did the whole text floater rebranding. All right. So I'm almost at 5,000 subscribers, happy about it. But I, but what I'm realizing is I have enough data now I've got enough data to start making decisions. Cause really when I launched the channel, it was, uh, do like my prime directive for myself was do everything that I already know has worked for me in the past, working for Twit, working for CNET. Um, my thought was, I'm going to do what they paid me to do, because there's obviously value there, and hope that I can make a business doing that. And something that my wife has reminded me of consistently is I keep throwing out the word hope, as if like <laughs> in the business world, as if just having hope is going to be enough to make things work. And, you know, as usually is the case with, you know, relationships, I'm sure other people can relate. Um, sometimes it takes like a number of times to hear the same thing before it really kind of finally starts to permeate. <laughs> That's definitely one of those things. And uh, so, you know, finally it, it cracked through my skull. It was like, okay, Having hope isn't enough to run a business. You can't just start a business and hope for the best. And so it's, it's a habit of mine to say, I really hope things are going to work out. Real businesses, they create a plan. They take a look at data. You know, they don't rely on hope. They rely on what works and what doesn't and, you know, putting systems into place that are going to tell them what's going to work and feeding that system and, and all that stuff. Potentially, they have a couple of dogs walking around as well to kind of lift them up when they're <laughs> when they're down. <laughs> I've got two, so I'm pretty lucky in that regard. Um, so from that perspective, I've been thinking, okay, well, then why don't I start looking at this not through the lens of hope and start looking at my catalog of information, my catalog of data, which right now, like I said, is about almost 200 videos. And this morning, uh, Saturday, October 26th, I woke up and I woke up 
you know, immediately, like, it's like my eyes open in bed and I was like, this is what I need to do. I need to open up all my channel stats. I need to download the spreadsheets. I need to organize the data. And it's time to take a close look at what is definitely working and what is not. And it's pretty interesting. I mean, to a certain degree, it kind of pairs up with what my thoughts have been. But um, so when I take a look at the the videos on this channel that uh, have worked, the top most viewed video that I've done is uh, I uploaded my music to Udio and I'm impressed. Um, that's the title of it. 24,203 views is what I wrote down. And uh, so that's, you know, respectable amount. Um, that's certainly, I'm very proud of that. It was really interesting when I made that video. It was a couple of days before leaving for Italy this summer. And I had the flash idea for a video while I was at the dog park to do this. I wonder what it would be like to feed my music into Udio and uh, see what happens. And I was like, I can only pull this off before Italy because we had so much to do before leaving for Italy. I can only pull this off if I don't tax myself with post-production. Like, how can I turn this around in two days? The systems that I had in place already took me a lot more time than that. And so it was kind of a challenge uh, to see if I could do it. And I was able to do it. And sure enough, while I was in Italy and it was published, it was taken off and it was doing great. And I was really happy with that. So that's my top most viewed video. Um, second most is half that. It's my big fat Italian one plus 12 review, no regrets, at 12,195 views. Um, a phone that was six months old when I did my review. So it didn't even have the recency quality. It did have the, I took this phone to Italy and this is what I thought based, you know, on my Italian experience, had that going for it. Maybe that's part of it. And then everything else, you know, third is the nothing phone two way review. Uh, fourth is CMF watch pro two review. Fifth Chromecast died for this. My Google TV streamer 4k review, which was pretty recent. That's at 9,824 views. And that was just like a month ago. So that's pretty good. That's probably going to have some, uh, some good longer tail. Unboxing the books Palma, what you need to know. That's a very old video at this point uh, in the context of my channel. Uh, OnePlus Watch 2 review. Uh, number eight, I collaborated with UDO to help write a new track. Game changer at almost 5,000 views. So again, there's the AI music thing. Uh, number nine, UDO 1.5 features stems, remixes, and more, a tutorial live stream. This was a feature that I was waiting for. It came out, so I fired up the stream. It was a, li a live stream, so really low, um, low preparation. It was just like, I'm going to fire up a live stream and see what it does, uh, you know, see what this UDO update does. So I didn't have to do a lot of homework. Turning it around wasn't that complicated, um, and, you know, it's almost 5,000 views. And then number 10 is uh, behind the scenes a day at Google's biggest launch event. Um, and I gotta mark that because I gotta make a, an edit to my Substack post, which is a little meta. Um, okay, so looking at all of that, top 10 videos for the channel. And this is everything. This is taking into account everything. The only thing that it's not taking into account actually is shorts. I feel like that's kind of a separate beast because uh, I've got a different strategy for shorts that seems to be working. So I'll talk about that in another time. But as far as these videos are concerned, I've got some takeaways. Embargoed gadget reviews, which if I really think about it is something that I've been doing for years, right? I did it um, a little bit at CNET, did it a lot at Twit. And tied in with all about Android when I was doing that podcast at Twit, and then now Android Faithful, um, they're really symbiotic. They really work well together, and um, and and so I guess it's kind of not surprising that embargoed gadget reviews do pretty well for me. Some examples from the top ten: Chromecast Dive for this, the Google TV Streamer review, uh, the Nothing Phone Two Way review. The CMF Watch Pro 2 review, the OnePlus Watch 2 review, all those were embargoed. I had the device in advance. I was able to kind of like launch a review right out of the gate, if memory uh, serves me. Sometimes my memory is a little fallible in that regard. Uh, what is interesting is that it's not foolproof for me, though. And I thought this was actually double interesting because when I think of 
my fan base, the people who've been following me for a long time, I think of Android because all about Android, I, you know, did that podcast for 12 years. Well, the Pixel 9 review that I did not too long ago, only sitting at 2,791 views, so almost 2,800 views, pretty low. The Pixel 8a review that I did, I don't know how many months ago that was, but it was it was an embargoed review, uh, 698 views. Like, it did awful. And so, and, and uh, yeah, that was really disappointing. And I, so, you know, it could have been packaging. I could have just not done the thumbnail thing. It could have been competition. I mean, really, at the end of the day, that's kind of where my mind is at. It's like, um, you know, embargoed tech reviews, what differentiates me from anyone else? I mean, you know, how, how would I even compete against the Marquez Brownlee and the, you know, the, the other big names who are doing these embargoed reviews? Those are the ones that people are going to almost immediately go for first and, you know, whet their appetite, get all the information that they really feel like they need. Maybe they watch a few other videos, but, but you can only watch so many videos about the same damn thing, right? Um, so the people that watch me are probably my fans and that's wonderful. Um, but it's going to be a lot harder for any of those videos to break through. Um, although, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the performance that I did get. I would love to get more. Right. And that's ultimately, that's the real challenge and the, the real kind of thing that I'm working towards. Um, so they're not a slam dunk, even when I've got Google Pixel, like these are like keywords that I would think that like if I've got an embargoed Google Pixel phone and I'm doing it on day one, considering my background, I would think that they would do really well, uh, just tied to the podcast and all that kind of stuff. But they don't always. And that's just, you know, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Um, gadget reviews that are removed from embargo uh, tend to do OK for me. Again, though, it just all depends. Like I like I mentioned earlier, the OnePlus 12 review. This was not an embargoed review. It had been out for six months when I released that review, and it has uh, and it has done very well. It's my second top most long form view, uh, top most viewed long form video on my channel. Uh, and I would never have expected that. Uh, side note, I also at the same time recorded a review of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra because I had taken that on the trip too, and I never finished editing it. And now I'm like looking at these videos, and I'm like, that video, you know, like I, I finished um, I finished the A-roll recording in uh, July, and then I just got busy with a bunch of different things and distracted and whatever. And so it's just kind of sat there and it needs to be edited and turned around. And I keep not doing it because I'm like, well, it's too late now. Like that's a review that I recorded in July. And I'm starting to think like maybe I just release it because <laughs> who knows, maybe the Italy tie in is, you know, maybe there's something to be said. I mean, in a couple of months, it's going to be outdated anyway. So I should probably get that out. Maybe I'll do that. Anyways, one plus 12 review did well, totally unbar unembargoed. Uh, the Books Palma, that was another one that did pretty well, 6,300, almost 6,400, um, but that was not tied to an embargo. That was right before the big Books Palma wave happened, like I reviewed it, and then I think like a month later, it started to get more pickup. Uh, people started discovering the Books Palma, so I got a little bit of um, a little bit of attention on the video from there. Others, though, sit outside of that. Okay, so I did the Google TV streamer video, and that did well. I mean, that did, yeah, that did pretty well. Uh, what is it, around 10,000, I think? Um, yeah, almost 10,000 views. My thought was, okay, well, then I'm going to pick up the On 4K Pro, I'm going to pick up the Apple TV 4K, and I'm going to do this big shootout, which I'm I'm still working on. I've, I've got this, like, comparison of all three, and it's going to be coming out, I think, next week. Um, and I thought, well, this is a great opportunity to tie other content into a bigger piece of content and do the kind of cross relational thing. You know, as I learn all about YouTube, this is one of the big things that you want to do. So I did an individual review of the on 4k pro and to date, it is not even cracked a thousand, you know, now it wasn't tied to an embargo. So there was none of that. It's seen as a budget device. So maybe that's part of the reason why, although at the same time, I'm like, yeah, but it's like Google TV streamer did really well. That's $100. This is half the cost and does almost everything that the Google TV streamer does. Anyways, I can't figure that one out. Um, one that I did that did nothing, I mean, it was a total nothing, 
was uh, the Steel Series Arctis Nova Pro wireless headphones. Because I enjoy doing headphones, like I'm an audiophile at heart. Um, I've got some headphones kind of on the docket that I'd love to uh, do reviews on the channel with. But I'm looking at like, you know, 285 views for the Steel Series headphones, which I thought were going to do pretty well. Um, it was it was a really important update to those headphones that make them far more comfortable uh, compared to the previous version. And uh, 285 views, like, and I think that came out months ago. So that just nothing. And so that's got me a little concerned as far as like, okay, well, headphone technology, do people care about that on my channel? I don't know. So these are just things that I'm picking up, right, through data. AI and music production. Again, going back to that UDO collaboration video that I did uh, right before going to Italy. That's the highest viewed video on my channel uh, to date. It just is. And double of anything else, right? Um, so that's really interesting. You know, I've had some, uh, like the other day, I, you know, the vidIQ folks were doing a thing on Twitter, like, hey, send us your channel and, and we'll give you a quick, you know, your channel a quick look and just tell you what we see looking at it uninitiated, right? And uh, what they said really lines up with where my mind is at is, is that, you know, I'm throwing a lot of spaghetti against the wall. It lacks focus. But their, their like recommendation was, hey, you know, that UDO collaboration video did really well. Why not focus on that and see what happens? You know, focus on that direction. And I would, I mean, I would love to do more videos like that. Do I want that to be my everything? Not really. Like, it would be fun to do more of that, but I don't want that to be the channel. And I'll talk about that more in a sec. Um, but anyways, good to know, you know, artificial intelligence is a very now thing, very, um, very trendy kind of thing when you're talking about online trends, music production is very niche, right? It's very specific to a certain audience, uh, tutorial online live streams. Some of the videos that I did about AI and music production are live streams. Uh, most of them are, except for this, this collaboration video, I think. Um, actually, no, that's not true. One of the other ones was edited, but done kind of live to tape mostly. Um, you know, less produced, more authentic, kind of like what I'm doing right now. This is more authentic than a lot of the content that I put on the channel. Maybe I need to do more of this. Um, and yeah, so it's really hard to nail down like what I do with that. Like that did well, but I'm pretty certain the majority of you watching this right now care a lot less about that. That's just a guess. That's just a hunch. Leave me a comment and let me know if I'm right. I would love to hear whether I'm right or wrong on that. Just drop me a comment, please. And let me know, like, is that you or is it not? Um, you know, I, I'm guessing not though. I'm guessing the AI and music production fan base came in from other parts of YouTube. Like, oh, here's this very specific thing that this person's doing. I'm going to subscribe. That video, by the way, is uh, I got the most subscribers from a single video based on that one. 400 new subscribers based on that one video alone. So, so it's hard to ignore that, right? Like when you get a big signal like that, it's really hard to ignore that. Vlog content, um, highly appreciated by viewers. Um, the behind the scenes, a day at Google's biggest launch event when I went to the Made by Google or MBG as uh, we call it. Uh, that Google told us that they, they were referring, referring to it as MBG. And I just thought it was hilarious. Like, Oh, people in the know call it MBG. Eh? That's me now. Um, anywho, uh, the, that video got almost 5,000 views, which in the context of everything else isn't astronomical, isn't nothing. It's kind of right in the middle. But what I find interesting about that video is it's the only video that I've done. That's kind of like a vlog style. It was like, check out the event as if you were going to it. And I had this device that I'm using right now to record this, the Osmo Pocket 3. And I was just kind of doing it vlog style. And, you know, there's some interviews in there and some hands-on or whatever. But it was also just kind of like my experience going to this event. And it was a lot of fun to make. And um, I just got a lot of engagement, there's that word, from people who watched it who uh, commented or, or hit me up on socials and just said, basically like, I love this format, do more of this. This was, you know, the most useful video from this event that I saw. I was like, oh, okay, well noted. I just don't have a lot of opportunities to do that. So anyways, I think that's worth noting. Um, 
Things that aren't working, and here's where things get a little uncomfortable for me. My, my history in all of this is podcasting. I started at CNET in 2005, almost immediately went into podcasting, um, and I've been doing it ever since. So what I've found through the data of this channel is that podcasts have no impact on the channel. Uh, they don't move the needle at all. I mean, maybe a little bit, but hardly at all. And just to be sure that I don't send, you know, any fans of the podcast that I do into panic mode, I'm only talking about the YouTube channel here. The podcasts have their own life in Podcast RSS. What I'm talking about is the video version coming into my Texploder YouTube channel. And yeah, they just they just don't live there very, you know, very strongly. Uh, the Texploder podcast. You know, this is interviews or conversations with tech professionals about being human in a binary world. You know, it's a topic that I love. And, oh, man, you know, it's so nostalgic and that they've the whole purpose of the podcast. I'm just really enjoying the top most uh, the top three episodes. Father Robert Balisser right up at the top. 1,618 views. So that's the most that it's gotten. Second, up, uh, second top is Tom Merritt. Now, Tom... And I have deep history. He is, you know, a podcaster with a large audience. We share a lot of audience and have ever since seen it. Um, he also happened to be episode one. And often with podcasts, or at least the two podcasts that I launched in the last year, episode one is always like one of the outliers. 1,323 views. The number three is Michael Fisher, a.k.a. Mr. Mobile, who has his own life online. Right, he is Mr. Mobile. He's got more than a million, I think, a million three or something like that. He's he's doing well in the in the realm of YouTube, uh, you know, gadget reviews and all that kind of stuff. Um, and he got a thousand ninety three views. I just got to notice that my mic battery is going to die here soon, so hopefully I can wrap this up quickly. Um, so there's that. I would say the vast majority of Texploder podcasts on the channel get anywhere between 200 to 400 views. Not doing a lot as far as that's concerned. You know, certainly not making generating revenue, but making me happy and I and I know from hearing from folks out there making you happy to have a video version of it. The uh, AI Inside podcast Top episode, Rabbit R1 First Look, episode 14, 3,322. It's the only one that's that high. That's double any other episode. And the reason for that is because Mark Spoonhour from Tom's Guide had the Rabbit R1. This was right in the middle of all the Rabbit R1 stuff, and I invited him on, and he did a hands-on with it. So it was perfect timing, tapping into kind of the currency and the zeitgeist of the Rabbit R1 debacle. Uh, so I'm not surprised about that at all. Uh, the second top, AI Positive, Rich Skrenta from Common Crawl, 1,533 views, happens to be episode one. Um, also a, an excellent guest, but it was episode one. Third highest uh, guest, Mike Elgin, joined for Google Gemini and the Wall of Noise. This was shortly after I came back from the Made by Google event. Maybe it's that, maybe it's Mike. Regardless, 1,360 views. I did notice that the top three, they all have guests. So that's interesting. Um, and I'd say the average view per video uh, through the channel uh, for the rest of the episodes, right around five, four, five, six hundred per episode. Not nothing, but it doesn't grow over time. It's like it just stays very level uh, at that point. Then I have a few um, other types of videos, right? Like um, off, or sorry, one-off interviews. So I did this uh, just a couple of weeks ago. Tesla Cybercab and Robovan, or Robovan, Real Progress or Smoke and Mirrors. That was with Sam Abul Samid um, as an analyst. 26, uh, 2,685 views. Second is Breaking Down Geekbench AI 1.0 with John Poole from Geekbench. You know, that was an embargoed Review, uh, interview that was like, hey, I can get you this interview. Do you want it? I was like, heck yeah, let's just put it on the channel and see what happens. And it just did nothing. 436 views. Don't know if it was topical. 
you know, like people just didn't really care that much about it. Don't know if it was just too different from what people were used to seeing or what the case was. I was hoping for a large number. Third place is, uh, third spot is Emil Torres. AGI is inherently unsafe. This was a breakout interview from an episode of AI Inside. Maybe that was part of it, but it only got 320 views. That was more of an experiment. Like if I pull these interviews out and give them life of their own, um, what does that do? And it turned out it did nothing. So here's here's where I'm at right now after taking a look at all this stuff with long form content on the channel is that I feel like the spaghetti uh, approach has been useful for the first almost year, but that I'm at a point to where I need to kind of sharpen focus. If I've got too many different things happening to the channel, um, it gets confusing. I think it gets confusing for new people, for people who know me and, and you know, you've followed me for years or whatever, like you're, you've told me anyways, you're going to follow me no matter where I am, no matter what I'm doing, you don't care. Just where are you going to be? I'm going to be there. And I'm so honored and, and deeply, you know, uh, grateful for that. But in order for me to make a business, I have to grow and I have to grow people th coming through the door, subscribing to the channel, watching my videos. At the end of the day, that's the most important metric is watching the videos. Um, and my concern is that my channel is all so all over the map that new people aren't certain when they subscribe uh, that they're going to get what they want, right? Someone comes through the door and they loved the music AI stuff that I did. And then they get a text bloater podcast with a podcaster they've never heard of. Like, they're not going to click on that. There's no way in, in the world that they're going to click on that. Um, they're not even going to be curious about that. They're, they might even see that as like, well, what are you doing? You're, you're filling my feed with junk and they might unsubscribe. Like, I don't want that. Um, you know, and the the flip of that, if if people follow me for my product reviews, which I do a lot of and they do well, and then they get these interviews or they get the music tech thing, you know, it's it's just very confusing. I'm doing all different types of stuff, reviews, how-tos, interviews, analysis, podcasts, unboxings, vlogs, live streams. None of that is inherently bad in and of itself. But I'm doing a lot of different types of technologies, right? Android, smartphones, smartwatches, AI services, headphones, video production gear, um, all of its technology. Maybe that's the unifying thing. It is. But, you know, is that niche enough? Um, topics all over the map. Hardware, news, development. I'm not a developer, but I'm doing development, uh, you know, topics. Artificial intelligence. General nerd dumb. You know, Text Loader Podcast is very much a, a nerd dumb type show. Not dumb, D U M B, but you know, very nerdy. It's it's kind of like I remember the first computer I got, and here's the feeling that it gave me. Um, that's not going to appeal to everybody. That's not going to appeal to someone <laughs> talking about the the Commodore Pet. You know, from 1979, that was born in the year 2000. Five and is following my AI music tutorials. So there's there's this like confusion going on right now, and I'm starting to feel like the purpose of the channel at this stage is fuzzy and difficult to discern from the outside looking in. And that would primarily be because, yes, I've been throwing spaghetti against the wall. It's been a full-on experiment for me, data-gathering experiment to try all these things. I see a couple of things that work. Tech product reviews and analysis. That definitely works. AI tutorials are even more, you know, drilled down AI and music production tutorials. That seems to work. Um, both of these things tied to very completely different audiences, as I've already talked about. And uh, so I don't know what to do there. If you have any ideas or thoughts or suggestions on that, please leave me a comment. Let me know. This is what this is all about. I'm just including you into the process if you want to be part of the process. Um, I think the other thing, and this is, I think, a really big kind of aha moment for me, is after looking at the data, I think it's pretty obvious, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm still kind of weighing the option. I think it's obvious that the podcasts not go away in video form, but go to their own channels. I just have this sneaking suspicion based on everything I've read and learned and watched and all this stuff 
that yes, podcasts can work on a channel, but only if they're really dialed into the topic of the channel. If I was doing a podcast about gadget reviews, it would work. I'm doing a podcast about AI news on a channel that most people are subscribed to for gadget reviews. Like there's some crossover there, but there's gonna be a lot of people that don't care. Like I wonder if an AI inside podcast uh, channel specifically and a text bloater podcast channel specifically, if having them on their own gives them a better chance at life or seeing uptick because the people that subscribe there know exactly what they're going to get. They're going to get those podcasts. That's what they came for. That's what they're going to get. They're not going to get all the other stuff and the flip to that, right? You're subscribed to my text bloater YouTube channel. You're just going to get my reviews. You're just going to get my tutorials or whatever. You're not going to get those podcasts also appearing in your feed that you're like, you don't care about, you know, potentially. Some of you do, I realize, but so that's seeming pretty clear to me is I think maybe I need to break them out. And that kind of sucks because I got to start from zero from a subscriber standpoint for both of those podcasts. <laughs> at the same time, when I look at like revenue generated, which is not the only metric that I care about, I care about creating something that I enjoy and that I love. That's why I do those things. That's why I do text exploder podcasts, especially like I love the topic. Um, but when I look at revenue generated, AI inside, the entire length of it being on YouTube has generated somewhere in the realm of $150. And so if I'm worried about creating a new channel for AI inside for just the podcast to, to live on because, I, because I'm starting over, like I'm hardly starting over. <laughs> like there's not a whole lot there to begin with. I think the main challenge there is I've got this catalog that's already on this channel that I'd have to move over. And that's a little, ugh, that does not sound fun, but it might be worth it to just like have a clean break, have them have their own lives separate of each other. And, um, and that is what it is. Um, and yeah, just really at the end of the day, sharpening the focus of the main text bloater YouTube channel. I think that's what I, that's what my gut tells me based on all of this data what I need to be doing. I need to sharpen focus. I need to, um, I, I've, I've thrown enough spaghetti at the wall. So now what, what words is that dripping spaghetti forming on the wall? <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and go from there. So I'm going to wrap this up before the battery dies. I am totally open to suggestions, to feedback, insight, um, things you like, things you don't, all the things. Drop it in the comments. Let me know where your mind is at, given all this. And if you made it to the end of this video, you are a rock star. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for caring as much as you obviously do if you made it this far about what I'm doing. Um, I really am putting, <laughs> I am putting everything I have into this channel. And it is... Uh, it's hard. It's hard, but it's really fulfilling. And uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know what to say other than that. I. I am working harder than I think I ever have, and uh, and I'm doing it because I have a vision of something that I really want to see work. And I, you know, and and I've never had my own thing before, and I'm kind of in the position to where I'm building my own thing and I want to see it succeed. It's my baby and I want to see it grow. So I want to do the things that are going to work and, and make it grow so that I can look back in a year or two and go, man, I'm so happy I did that. So thank you for allowing me to uh, share a little bit of my heart with you and uh, yeah, share a little bit of your thoughts and your heart. If you want to share your heart with me, I appreciate that too. I could take it. Um, Y'all are awesome. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here and for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.